I learned about the story when I received the script. And um, I, my reaction unfolded kind of slowly. At first I was really fascinated by it. Um, and then that kind of dropped into anger as I realized that it was real. And then, and then a whole bunch of emotions as I realized it was ongoing. You know, I think we've come to expect, particularly, particularly when we see films about social justice work, I think that we have, in David Goliath stories, we expect to see Goliath fallen at the end, or felled at the end of it. And that's not exactly the case here. And so I kept waiting for that, you know, that kind of um, uh, ecstatic release moment at the end of it. And I realized that's not this story. The story is harder. The story is um, more reflective of reality. And this is something that's ongoing. This is something that involves all of us. It was a talk with Todd that made me want to play this part because, you know, um, when I first got it on the page, uh, there's this cliche about, you know, um, th there's the Sandra character and then his wife. And uh, when I first got it, I thought, oh, is this one of those situations? And then Todd told me about Sarah Barlidge and who she is. And I was pretty humbled, actually, by um, and kind of brought down to earth by my own assumptions about what a Midwestern housewife was. Sarah is someone, she is vivacious, she's powerful, she has so much strength, and she's full of contradictions. You know, you can't tell everything about her just by one aspect of her. So I really had to meet her and get to know her. And um, and I'm not sure that I figured out all of what she's about, but I, I, I think I found enough to, to kind of give people a, hopefully a good glimpse. I've gotten a glimpse of what it is that allowed her to be so strong for so many years. You know, it's not a small thing to have a stranger come and say, okay, I'm going to represent you to the world. And I think a lot of people would have had, um, you know, a wide spectrum of reactions, but hers was unfailingly generous and open and honest and trusting and... Um, my performance was allowed to be so much richer because of that. And so I'm, I was grateful to her before I met her. I'm grateful to her after I met her. Um, she, she's a really special and unusual person. It, it makes sense to me that she was able to go through this with as much grace and honesty and, um, and dignity as the situation required. This is a story about a very particular American sort of hero. And I think we've become very used to seeing our heroes be larger than life. And Rob the Lot is an understated man. His uh, heroic qualities are not loud. They are not necessarily what society celebrates, but they are the thing that allowed him to change the world for us. Like there's very, little glory in all of this that's gone his way. Um, he's done this because for a very simple reason, he felt like it was the right thing to do. And to be a part of celebrating someone so humble, so quiet, and so unexpectedly heroic felt, it felt like a real gift. One of the first things Todd told me was that I would be playing a conservative Republican. And um, I thought, well, that, how to, in my kind of thinking at the time, I was like, well, how do conservative republicanism and environmentalism, how do those two things go together? And Todd and I have had a lot of really interesting conversations about that, about how some of Sarah's heroism comes from the fact that her life took a real left turn away from what she thought it would be, what she had been led to expect it would be, um, what she perhaps even signed up for but that she keeps going because of this really simple concept, which is doing the right thing. And that causes her to leave behind certain things that, you know, I think if you'd asked her at the beginning of the story, she would have said were really important to her. And But she always took a step forward in terms of, well, okay, now that I understand this more deeply, what are my true values? So Todd was amazing at helping me see all the complexities of her, helping me understand all the complications, not to get confused by them, but to actually be more uh, liquid about them. 
they're a good match with each other. Sarah's really outgoing and vivacious and chatty, and Rob's very stoic and understated and quiet. So they do complement each other nicely. And I wonder about that a lot, about how much they're they're, the difference in their personalities kind of allowed them to move through this, but um, but they share common values. It's important to them to do the right thing. It's important to them to be good people. It's important to them to be people of service. Mark, Todd, and I have asked that a lot. You know, why didn't you walk away? Like you had a few to rob. Like well, you you had a few invitations to walk away. Why have you why have you stayed in this fight? And gone deeper with it, like sure, like a, like uh, nobody would have blamed you for saying mercy and and doing something else. And I think Rob comes back to this thing about it's the right thing to do. He doesn't see he he has such at this point expertise on the subject. He's put in so much. I think he wants to see it through. What he brings to the role is a lot of things that we've come to to expect from him. Stunning acting, so intelligent, so soulful, um, so dignified, with so much integrity. On a, in some ways, I think, on a scale that we've, we haven't gotten to see from Mark yet. And it's, it's such a beautiful, understated performance. There's something very... Um, there's something very risky about what he's doing, you know, to play someone so understated for the length of a film. Um, and I think he's pulling it off. He's doing, I, I find him incredibly captivating in this role. And, uh, and the story that he's, that he's giving to us for us all to know, it's a real gift. There's knowledge in this film. This is an important bit of history for us to know. Um, it's important to know that there's a man named Rob Belot, and he made us safer. He's a huge reason why the world is a safer place and is becoming a safer place, and he can't do it alone. He's carried this on his back for a really long time, and he needs us. This is a Teflon is completely safe for cooking. Being Rob, you need to tell me when the hell's going on. Then he'd get sick for weeks. Teflon flu, the guys would call it. She gave birth to a baby with one nostril and a deformed eye. Not enough to poison these people, they gotta swindle them too. Not the companies, not the scientists, not the government. We protect us. We do. どれだけのものを失えば、真実に光を当てられるのか。